Hi friends, I miss Emily and I want to welcome you back to Wonderful Wednesday. We've been talking this week about insects and today we are going to revisit the idea of metamorphosis. If you tuned in a few weeks ago, you'll remember that we learned about amphibian metamorphosis and how frogs and toads start out in the water as eggs and then grow up through the tadpole to the adult stages. Insect metamorphosis is similar in that insects also start out as tiny eggs and eventually end up as adults. We were able to easily observe the changes that a tadpole goes through on its way to becoming a frog. But a lot happens in between an insect hatching out of its egg and flying off into the sunset. Some of it's pretty mysterious. There are two main kinds of insect metamorphosis. One is called incomplete metamorphosis, or hemimetabolism. This means that although the insects grow and become larger, their bodies don't completely change shape. They go through three stages, egg, nymph, and adult. Praying mantises are good examples of insects that undergo incomplete metamorphosis. They begin life as eggs. Mantis eggs are laid in a case called an uthica. When the babies, or nymphs, hatch, they're tiny spitting images of the adults. Each time a nymph molts or sheds its exoskeleton, it's called an instar. Mantises can have up to 12 instars, which means they will molt 12 times before they're completely grown. And as with many other adult insects, their wings fully develop by the time they are adults. So it's easy to recognize a baby praying mantis because it looks just like the grown-up body doesn't completely change as it grows, and we call that incomplete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis, or holometabolism, on the other hand, is when an insect like a ladybug goes through four separate life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The way their body looks and works changes completely between stages. We didn't always understand complete metamorphosis. In fact, for a really long time, scientists thought caterpillars and butterflies were actually two very different types of insects. But about 300 years ago, a woman from Austria named Maria Sibylla Marian traveled to the rainforests of South America and began observing insects. She was the first person to study and record these insects going through the process of metamorphosis and discovered that the same insect could look completely different in each stage of life. Since she was an artist, Maria made beautiful drawings of these bugs. She even discovered that certain insects prefer specific plants, and she would draw those insects on their host plant. Okay. So do you remember back a couple weeks ago when we talked about amphibians? Do you remember what that word means? It means double life, referring to the fact that animals like frogs and toads can start their lives in the water and then they end up on land as adults. Well, frogs and toads aren't the only examples of amphibious animals. Let's meet a creature called a caddisfly. A female caddisfly lays her eggs just above a creek, a pond, or a puddle, and when the larvae hatch, they fall into the water. The larvae then begin to collect whatever is around them. Bits of leaves, little pine needles, tiny pebbles, bits of twigs, sand, and even the shells of other animals. They produce a sticky silk to hold the case together and the case helps them camouflage underwater and hide from predators. Eventually, the caddisfly attaches the case somewhere safe and seals off the end of the tunnel. At this point, they become a pupa, the stage of metamorphosis in between the larva and the adult. Finally, the adult caddisfly emerges, leaves the water, and flies around at night looking for nectar. 
Because the larvae use whatever happens to be available, artists have experimented with caddisflies, placing them in tanks of water lined with gold flakes and tiny gemstones for them to use for their cases. Once the pupa hatch into adults, the artists can use their empty cases to make jewelry. It's time to make our own caddisfly cases. You'll need an empty cardboard roll, some scissors, some glue, a wooden craft stick, any old picture of a caddisfly larva you happen to have lying around your house, and materials like sequins, tissue paper, ribbons, and any other tiny bits. First step is to color in the larva and then cut it out. Then you need to glue it to the craft stick and set it aside to dry. Next, take the shiny bits and the paper and the ribbons or whatever other materials you're using and carefully glue those to the cardboard roll. This will represent the larva case. Decorate it however you'd like and then set it aside for a little while to let the glue dry. Once all the glue has dried on your caddisfly case, you can take your little larva, pop him in there, and he can peek and hide and check stuff out, just like he would be doing if it were actually underwater in a real caddisfly case. Keep in mind one thing that caddisflies, as well as frogs and toads all have in common, is that they need clean water in order to survive. Come on back next week for Wonderful Wednesday, and we're going to explore the aquifer, the water in Austin that is literally under our feet. I'll see you next week.